Okay, uh, welcome to the first video that I will be doing for the Upgrade Center. So one of the things we put here is the uh, order of operations. So first is Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager and Veeam 1 and Kirsten's already got that one done. So let's do the Veeam 1, or sorry, the Veeam Enterprise Manager. So you just go to Downloads and I've already downloaded the file here. So let's go ahead and mount the ISO. Uh, one thing I should also do Let's note the time on the computer here. It's 1.04 p.m. This will give you a sense of how long it takes. Now through the video, I might uh, pause it a few times, but um, this will at least, when I end the video, the actual system time will have run so we can see how long it takes. First thing right away, new installer. Razzle dazzle, hey? And it already detects that Enterprise Manager is installed on this system and it's going to offer to upgrade it. Now, if Enterprise Manager wasn't on this system, I think, and you just had backup and replication, it would upgrade. That would be available and then it would say install um, Enterprise Manager. Okay, so um, it is does a quick look at what's installed so it'll give you a sense of what's going on. Now, one thing I'll highlight once the install starts, I want to draw everyone's attention to parts of the user guide here in a second, and I'll come back to that once we start. All right, so the first step is the license agreement, always a good idea. And then this here just says I'm going from basically V11A to version 12. And if you have 14.02, not 1.4.2.0, that's that RTM version. We have a day zero patch that uh, I'll put up in the upgrade center here soon. It does detect the license in there, great. And just give a quick read of the license usage reporting. This is nice because if it's enabled, it'll double your grace period of exceeding the instance count. And then the next question should be around the account that is used for the Enterprise Manager uh, application. And Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that same account could change it if I wanted to. Ah, this is an interesting one. So it detects that SQL Server is already installed. If you're doing a new install, by the way, you could drop down and select Postgres. It's found the database and the configuration in place, and it's going to ask me if I want to actually upgrade that database. So let's see if it detects that. Yep, it's going to be upgraded to the new version. Now it's going to check all the install options and see if it's clear to go. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to let this run here for a second. Like I said, I may um, pause parts of the video, but while this gets started, I want to draw your attention to the Help Center. And in here, you know, if you haven't ever been in Help Center, definitely give it a look. But for Enterprise Manager, it has its own kind of user guide here. Now, one of the most popular uh, errors that happen is with uh, certain environments where antivirus will block the creation of a website. So I do want to draw your attention to this, this KB article because on some of the other environments I've had with different AV software, this has even got me in my own lab. So that was fun going to IT to ask them to um, set up an exclusion here. So give some look here, and if you even go, there's a forum thread about this as well. This isn't exactly new, but this is one of those things that this error message may get you uh, with your AV. So you might want to give that a look ahead of time before the installation starts. And like I said, one of my other environments, it did catch it, uh, and, and it failed the upgrade right now I do recommend taking a backup of your enterprise manager server or um, even uh, you know just with another Veeam console like you can deploy community edition just take Veeam zip ad hoc backups right something like that even 
just to hold on to it just in case you get that type of problem. Um, but I did want to draw your attention to it and I'll put that in the notes. Okay, I'm going to let this go for a bit. Um, I'll pause the video, but we, like I said, we did log the start time so that we'll see kind of how, how long it takes. All right. Well, the other thing I'll uh, mention is that depending on what you have, right? Because we have a lot of environments that I use here, but like sometimes I only have a total of two steps. But in this example, this environment, there's three, right? So your your look may be different. This particular environment truly has one of everything, and that's why it has the the three different upgrade components. All right, just like that. So it says it is successfully upgraded. Um, so that was just about nine minutes, call it 10 in this environment. Um, you know, if you're planning the time from an outage perspective of what you might have to deal with, um, I would give it, you know, also add the time potentially to do a, um, you know, if you did do that backup in case something didn't go as planned, you know, what, what type of extra time would you need there like a ad hoc backup and a instant recovery or like even a quick rollback that type of thing so um yeah let's take a look so yeah I, you know if i had to just advise say allocate half an hour for this and nobody's going to be upset if you're done early all right so this is the new enterprise manager let's go double check um so those are the other systems and you can already see that one of the uh, systems in play we got different versions right so um, we've got a, a mix of things going on so yeah we're uh, definitely up and running uh, one thing I'll tell you that particular one pay no attention to that because that was one that was a, a beta that was in play earlier here's what I want to see right here and in case you're wondering yes I am doing this from an airport all right, well, hey, that concludes this second video here, the uh, upgrade of Enterprise Manager. Drop a comment if you like what you see or got a question. Thanks for watching.